the cozy game for those of us who have a dark side. In this review, I will be providing a short summary and also my thoughts on the different aspects of the game. I want to break down this game into its fighting, the cult aspect, and the farming sim slash task-oriented part of the game. Much like the title suggests, Cult of the Lamb is a game about starting up your own cult. You start out as a cute little lamb who's on the way to the proverbial slaughter. The demons are ready to sacrifice the main character, which is called the lamb. But in talking amongst each other, they realize that the lamb can serve a much better purpose as the cult leader. And thus your journey begins. Ratawu is your wise sage who is guiding you as you begin your cult. He explains that souls will begin to appear on your compound. Once you rescue them, then they are basically indebted to you and should pledge allegiance to you. There's definitely a mix of styles in this game. There is some action adventure. You are following an overarching plot, but as far as deciding what you want to do next, there is a ton of free will. So let's talk about the fighting aspect. With this kind of game, you are going to get people who want to play for different reasons. While I do love a good fighting game, I definitely was here more for the cult slash farming sim aspect. And thankfully the game recognizes this, so very early on you can decide whether you want to play easy, medium, or hard. I chose easy and this is the kind of fighting that you will see throughout the game. There isn't a whole lot of skill involved overall. Realistically, you can pretty much smash buttons all the way through up until you get to the bosses. And then once you get to them, there is slightly more skill involved. According to a couple of forums, it wants you to not just try to attack nonstop, but this really has only been a problem for one of the bosses that I tried fighting. Other than that, you probably can avoid the attacks pretty easily and just attack non-stop. Overall, there just isn't a whole lot of excitement in the fighting itself. Like I said, since I was all about gathering resources in order to grow my farm, I was a whole lot more invested in trying to rescue some new members from my cult and trying to get more resources so that I could have the cutest little compound. Be warned though, even on easy, it is very likely for you to die. Part of what made me slightly annoyed is that you don't get to choose your weapon or keep the weapons that you fight with. And so if you get a weapon that is particularly slow, you have to make sure that you change up your fighting style so that you can still defeat the monsters. Overall, if I had to look at a positive side to the fighting, I would say it adds plot and allows you to explore in a maze type kind of way. But I could really do without it. I am much more here for the cult aspect. On the note of being a farming sim, it is everything you would want it to be. Very early on, you start doing what you are very much accustomed to doing. You're going to gather lots of fruit. You are going to start figuring out how to build things using rocks and wood and different other materials. It just feels right. Of course, keeping this in mind, if you don't like task-oriented games, then you are going to big time struggle with this aspect of the game. If you're going to have a cult and have plenty of loyal followers, then you have to keep them alive. And your followers do very much, in fact, die for all sorts of reasons. So if you're not prioritizing food, if you're not prioritizing shelter, if you don't realize that they are very sick, they could very much just die on you. And you can't be a successful cult leader if you don't have a following. It's not just multitasking between priorities with your cult, it's also prioritizing how you want to fight. Aside from gathering resources, you also use those resources in order to cook. Cooking is very simple and straightforward. However, you also have to get really good resources in order to make better foods. If you don't get good resources and make high quality foods, your followers will either get the runs really bad or they will get sick. When you first start out the game, you basically have to do most of the tasks yourself. But as you progress and level up and the loyalty grows, then the followers can also join in on some of the tasks. So for example, while you might have to start farming on your own, suddenly you can have three or four farmers and they're also collecting all the food for you. And so all you really have to do is cook, but then you can also assign someone to cook. Ultimately, you can pretty much have them do everything for you, which is rather nice. And of course, what is a cozy game without having the ability to make decorations? The farming sim aspect is very well done, and I would compare it even to the likes of anything like Baron Breakfast or Stardew Valley. It really is enjoyable without becoming too monotonous like maybe Animal Crossing might. Finally, in talking about the cult aspect, this is what truly gives this cozy game a devious angle, and I am so here for it. 
Whenever you travel, you are able to gather new converts for your cult. When they first arrive, they might have a more humble attitude or they might be a little saucy. You can customize your followers by their looks and by their color. And then after that, they are then converted with the special cult attire. Given the general cuteness of this game, the cult aspects start super mild. Like you can give your followers a blessing. As their loyalty increases, then they also get to level up. And that also allows you to level up in your abilities as a cult leader. The culty things start sneaking up on you with small things, like if somebody is not entirely faithful. You can casually choose to just re-indoctrinate them while they are imprisoned. At the temple, you want to preach a sermon every single day, and you also have the opportunity to do rituals. The rituals can be seemingly innocent, like enlightening someone, but they can also get really dark, like sacrificing people and having the ability to marry as many people as you want. Now, truly for myself, a lot of times I like playing games Chaotic Evil, but something about creating like an evil cult just didn't sit quite right with me. So I ended up deciding to be a nice cult leader. I chose things like respect for the dead and being mostly vegetarian and believing in free will. Overall, what I love about games like Cult of the Lamb is that they are a type of social commentary. You can tell that the creators of this game really took some time to understand the different qualities that come with being in a cult and then applied them to a video game. This is easily one of my favorite games this year and I really hope that more people have the chance to enjoy it. Have you played Cult of the Lamb? Let me know in the comments below. Tell me your cult name. Tell me what you're about. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.